From Navy officer in charge of a billion dollar project in northern Chile to raising over 35 plus million and scaling to 40 plus employees. How do we leverage our military learned lessons to start, grow, and scale a startup worth millions of dollars? Well, ambitious vet, if you're just like me dying to hear those golden grenades, stay tuned as this guest is about to throw grenade, golden grenade launchers at you. Just stay tuned. As well, we had to overcome um, a stigma around, you know, hey, you guys have never worked at a software company, uh, created <laughs> software, and here you are raising money to start a software company. Help help me understand why I should have confidence giving you money. But um, really the, the domain expertise and then the combination of that with actually like leadership, uh, a big part of starting a company is like, can you attract talent to work for you and then lead that talent to, um, you know, to achieve the goals that you set out to do. And so. Do you struggle with your payroll processing? If so, check out Get Payroll, a Vietnam veteran owned company disrupting the fintech industry with their payroll app. Get Payroll provides seamless integration with online payroll, HR, and timekeeping solutions for businesses of all sizes. Get Payroll is the only company in their space to have a U.S. tax court practitioner and CPA on staff to ensure 100% compliance. And also, they got a dedicated payroll service specialist based in the U.S. that's assigned to you from day one to talk to you anytime you have a question. Talk about accountability. They got it. From onboarding a new employee to ensuring they're getting paid on time to implementing an HR policy, Get Payroll helps you do it all. To learn more Ambitious Vet, simply click our affiliate link in the show notes below before saying goodbye to us today. It's time to get into the trenches, dig dig into your purpose, and, and fire up your life fulfillment. The Ambitious Vet Podcast. Starts now. What's going on, Ambitious Vet? We are right back inside the church today with Zach Shield. Zach is a Navy officer, veteran, co founder, and CEO of Rombix, a San Francisco based startup helping builders go paperless in the field and improving how they measure and manage labor productivity. Zach has more than a decade of construction project management experience across three continents. And the coolest thing about this entire thing, um, in my in my humble opinion, is he was announced in 2016, him and his co-founder and his team that he's been able to build with this startup. And Forbes is number eight top hitter and founded startups in America by an article written by Mark Re- Rockefeller from Street Share. So Zach, welcome to the show, brother. Happy to be here, Chris. Brother, as I already said, man, we're going to screw this up a little bit, man. But hey, let's uh, let's let's uh, do it like veterans do, man. Let's just be authentic, huh? <laughs> <laughs> so, Zach, you've done some really awesome work, brother. I mean, uh, just to get to the point of where you've been at with Rumbix as far as raising 37 plus million dollars, scaling to over 40 plus employees and co-founding it with a Navy brother. Um, I mean, it's just, it's just absolutely a great story, but I want the Ambitious Fest to know more about your background, your experience, and your transition transition story leading up to co-founding Rumbix in 2014. Yep, absolutely. So uh, my background, uh, U.S. Navy Civil Engineer Corps, uh, more affectionately known as the, the CBs. Um, so I did five years on active duty, <clears throat> uh, transitioned out in 2011, and um, didn't know what I wanted to do after after I got out of uh, out of the military. So uh, opted to go to business school, uh, pursue uh, an MBA, <clears throat> uh, utilize the uh, the post 9/11 GI Bill, and uh, thought I wanted to go work for Bechtel. As I actually wrote my career vision essay about going to work for Bechtel, and, and ended up doing um, my two summer internships with them. Uh, the second summer internship, uh, I was working at the world's largest copper mine uh, up in up in northern Chile. And um, on this project um, was a three and a half billion dollar project that uh, went around nine hundred million dollars over budget. Um, The contract vehicle was was cost plus, which means that the owner uh, bore the burden of that that over um, budget expense. And so uh, it was a huge, huge problem, huge issue. Um, And on that project was was just trying to think about, hey, there's there's got to be a better way the primary source of data that we are capturing 
every day was coming from a thousand paper time cards, uh, tracking work for, for 7,000 Chilean workers that were, were working four shifts around the clock. Um, and, and so actually the inspiration was, um, was Blue Force Tracker. Um, you know, I was, I was sitting there at the copper mine. Uh, it was taking us two weeks to get accurate data um, that uh, was handwritten on paper time cards, um, manually transcribed into um, Excel, sent to an access database. Um, and, and so the, the latency of the data um, allowed us to never really proactively kind of know what was going on real time on the job site. Mm. So, wow. So yeah, so as I was, I was thinking about a solution, it was kind of, hey, I wish we had Blue Force Tracker to, to kind of have real time and visibility into what's going on in this job site every day. Wow, wow. I'm, I'm just thinking about 7,000 plus workers and the material cost of the paper. I mean, holy cow, like just, wow, wow. And good for you, brother, to like spot that problem in the marketplace too, because that, that had to be a huge aha moment for you. Yeah, I mean, it was uh, Bechtel's um, last 20 plus years has been uh, the number one um, EPC, which is engineer, procure, construct uh, contractor in the world. Um, and here they were struggling uh, with data collection. And um, so, yeah, that was the big, big light bulb kind of epiphany moment for me. Um, the, the second um, was that um, I, um, as much as I like the work I was doing with Bechtel, I, um, after being in the military and finding myself at a copper mine in northern Chile, I, I decided I was I was done living in shitty parts of the planet against my own will. <laughs> and, uh, and so uh, set out to try to find a way to to stay in the Bay Area where I was was wrapping up grad school at Stanford, and um, yeah, just had this this huge need and opportunity that I was kind of staring in the face uh, by virtue of the the problems I was trying to solve but didn't have the tools to solve it for. Um, and, um, yeah, that gave me kind of the, uh, the, the kick in the butt I needed to, um, think that I could go raise money and try to solve it. <laughs> oh my God. That's so great. I think we were talking about in our previous conversation too, how like us, us veterans, you know, sometimes we get stupid ideas, but we just execute them anyway. <laughs> and the difference between us and civilians sometimes is we don't have that filter. We just take the next step forward. So that's a... That's awesome to kind of end up in San Francisco. I mean, not a bad place to end up to start a startup, huh? No, not at all. Yeah, se seven and a half years in and and nobody's told me I, I can't do this yet. So I just keep keep doing it. <laughs> nice, nice, nice. Well, you're definitely killing it, brother. So um, so that's great. So you you went to the Bay Area, you found out the key problem in a, a high conflict area, Chile, with limited resources. You moved to uh, the Bay Area. Walk us through the starting process of the, the Rumbik story, man. Yeah, yeah, early days, um, uh, we were actually um, trying to use uh, wearables on the arms of construction workers to, to try to passively detect work completion um, and, and track their location. So um, very much heavily inspired by, by Blue Force Tracker and my co-founder and I, um, um, met him at Stanford at, at the business school. Um, neither of us are technical in terms of like uh, software development. We, we don't write code. Um, and so it was interesting, like we're, we're out trying to raise uh, money from venture capital. <laughs> uh, we, 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 took, we took offense to people calling us non-technical because um, we kept on hearing this, be like, oh, well, you guys are non-technical. And I said, well, I, I'm a civil mechanical engineer and he's a nuclear engineer. So between the two of us, we could build and operate a small modular power plant, mm -hmm. uh, nuclear power plant. But if you're asking if I code, the answer is no. Um, so I think early on and that 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 always got the VCs to chuckle. And I think, you know, one one point to make, uh, you know, for the audience here is um, actually like veterans were such a foreign entity to the venture capital community that it helped differentiate us from you know probably the more tech you know more traditional tech founders and and um so i think that definitely served us well we had to overcome um a stigma around you know hey you guys have never worked at a software company uh created <laughs> software and here you are raising money to start a software company help help me understand why i should have confidence giving you money but um, really the, the domain expertise and then the combination of that with actually like leadership, uh, a big part of starting a company is like, can you attract talent to work for you and then lead that talent to, um, you know, to achieve the goals that you set out to do. And so um, we got bonus points for being veterans and in the latter category, uh, de-risking, um, you know, 
would people actually follow us uh, in the company uh, that we're able to hire? No, that's great. I love that. Um, yeah, because you know, you guys went on to raise over thirty-seven plus million dollars, correct? Correct. That's 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 incredible, right? With uh, you know, veterans in the Navy that had tons of constructive um, construction um, experience to raising that kind of money with no software experience. I remember you saying that in our previous conversation. I'm just like, holy cow, how does this happen? But I'm excited to dive into how that actually happened, right? Like how you started scaling this thing to 40 plus employees and more nowadays and just building an incredible culture, brother. Cause I went and checked out the website. It looks like you guys do retreats. It's like a, it's a bond over there. You guys have created an awesome culture, um, but I'm, I'm done talking over here. I want the ambitious vet to listening to this. How did you guys get to this point, leveraging your military learned lessons? Before we leak out those last few golden grenades, ambitious vet, I just want to ask you this question. Do you want to help us shift how veterans are viewed in the marketplace? If so, join the fight by supporting our qualitative research study that reveals a new veteran demographic that values self-actualization or in Marine Corps language, valuing being shit hot in the marketplace. We dove inside the trenches with University of Texas San Antonio, San Antonio and we went to work. Our hypothesis was simple, that there was a veteran avatar who was competent in the basics of finding career stability, but was still lacking something in life. You see, a total of 300 veterans participated in this study in 31 states, letting us know what they really want after resume writing, inter interview preparation, and also other immediate transitional tools that teach us how to achieve career stability. If you're ready to join the fight, click the link in the show notes to learn more about what we need to stop the finger pointing once and for all from state officials to local VSOs and VSOs pointing to HR managers. Well, now back to the show. Yeah, I mean, it was it was uh, when we started the company, Drew and I were equally excited about um, building an awesome culture and team uh, as we were the problem that we were solving around helping improve labor productivity on job sites. And so we actually borrowed pretty significantly from a lot of military influences as we shaped our, our framework for culture. Um, and so it's actually based on the team of teams book by, by General McChrystal. Um, you know, the four core pillars of that framework are trust, empowered execution, um, shared consciousness and, and common purpose. And so when we began, you know, doing work on the culture that we wanted to build within Rumbix, you know, our four core company values are trust and transparency, uh, workers first, uh, message to Garcia, which which anyone who's been in the Navy will get, um, <laughs> and then gains, uh, which is all around continued improvement and, and kind of pushing ourselves forward. And so um, those those core values that we've established map to those principles. Uh, that General Crystal uh, codified in Team of Teams based on his experience in cultural transformation of specifically JSOC uh, while fighting against Al Qaeda in Iraq and Afghanistan and how agile and adaptive they needed to be to be able to fight a, a networked enemy that uh, the likes of which um, the U.S. as a conventional military fighting force hadn't hadn't encountered before. Wow. Yeah, I love how you just brought the military philosophy behind that, right? to just forge forward. You know, it just sounds like that's, that's what you guys, you guys did, you guys did your homework. You took that experience and you just repurposed it towards building the next mission in life. And sometimes it is that simple finding the tools like JJ did tie buckle for us Marines. Right. And just re <laughs> you know, I still have that. Oh my gosh. I still have that in my head, man. Um, to just repurpose, to build a, a, a good, integrity-based culture, right? So it's just, that's amazing. It's amazing stuff. So you guys built that culture, like built that up. So walk us through like what that looks like day in and day out at Rumbix as far as walking through your core values. Because I think there may be an ambitious vet here that's just like, yeah, I'm a mid-level manager. I'm a startup entrepreneur. How do I create that, that palpable culture, right? At the very beginning, to attract the right talent, scaling it with more investment money, stuff like that. Yeah, and, and so when you think about um, a startup, um, culture is often like uh, a part that gets overlooked. And, and actually one of my friends from, from business school um, who 
coincidentally or, or probably not coincidentally is also a veteran uh this guy uh charles holloway um was admiral rickover's aide putting the first nuclear power plants on submarines um and um he's a professor at, at stanford and you know he said wow. zach you can you can either be pro proactive about culture um or a culture will still develop if you're not like there's not going to not be a culture but in the absence of being proactive uh, one will develop organically and you may or may not like it so if you want culture to be something that differentiates your company you should be proactive about it and so I, drew and i definitely took that to heart and and you know when we were a six-person company um had open discussions around culture and around you know how we operate um you know again sampling from the military i went and got construction vests and i used to go down to the local tailor and get um, name tags made and um velcro uh above so they would have Name uh, tapes. Wow. Uh, <laughs> exactly. Oh man, that is great. Construction safety vests and hard hats that looked like you were out of the CBs, but um, it, it allowed us to recruit talent um, and, and have that talent be feel like they're part of something special. Um, uh, a big lesson learned for any any startup is like, especially the early stage, like talent is everything. Um, attracting and retaining talent, and um, in a world where there's you know, tens of thousands of startups uh, all over the place. Um, there is very much a talent war for for the highest level talent. And so um, what our experience has been is that non veterans actually were attracted to veteran run companies. Um, you know, either it was cool, um, they, you know, the, the, the culture resonated with them or, you know, um, you know, felt like they thought about serving, but never served and, and wanted to be around more people who had served, um, you know, to be exposed to that, that, that world. Um, and so certainly the veteran angle has been uh, a competitive advantage for us in terms of um, uh, recruiting, hiring and, and retaining talent um, and the veteran aspects that have percolated into the culture that we've built at Rumbix. Yeah, no, that's awesome. One question that popped up to my head with that was like, do you think it's because of like the millennials being more purpose centered and like, you know, us veterans being so mission driven, you know, a lot, we have a lot of, you know, guests on this show that are just like, you know, veterans, we don't have a time clock. We don't clock out, man. We just, we, we work until the job gets done, until the mission's complete. Uh, mission accomplishments, what's drilled into us since day one of joining the military. So, I mean, I, I don't have the answer to this, but do you think that like it's it's the ge a generational thing that you know millennial talents is driving towards military based companies because they they want to find a purpose driven company or a mission driven company or what what are your thoughts on that? Yeah, I think it's a combination, and, and certainly like you can see behind me, workers for, first being one of our core values mm -hmm. is really around delivering modern technology to um, a population of workers, you know, construction workers that have largely um, not been paid attention to in terms of meeting their needs. Uh, the folks in the office and the trailer have tons of tools. Uh, they're given paper, paper, <laughs> maybe a tablet. Um, and so, um, so certainly look like startups are long hours. You're typically underpaid with a promise of like future riches from a liquidity event. And so I think it's very important to have a mission component to that. Um, um kind of the double bottom line you know do good in the world um because um you know when, when you think about what motivates somebody intrinsically um daniel pink i i think is a great author and really kind of highlights like mastery autonomy and purpose mm -hmm. and um you know, one of the things that you need and that we found has very been a very effective with us at rumbix is can you foster intrinsic motivation of your employees and so purpose is a a big you know one one third of that component you know it's mm -hmm. like can you provide purpose and um you know that that purpose could be uh, delivering software to men and women that don't have it um you know uh, moving forward the world's you know largest industry uh into the 21st century um and, and certainly um you know we get a subset of people that are interested in the company likely because they have a, a purpose driven or mission driven um, bit to themselves. And so I, I do think certainly it, it, it helps, um, you know, versus if I was just optimizing AdWord clicks on the side of a website. Um, I would have quit long ago because because um, there's no purpose there, no kinds of intrinsic motivation. So I think it's super mm -hmm. important to kind of to cultivate that 
because uh, startups take time um, and, and they're hard. Uh, and so without purpose, um, you're just doing it for a paycheck and, and typically the paychecks aren't that great in startups either. <laughs> that is so true. It's kind of underpaid. You know, I've shared this in a previous episode, but it's kind of like motivation first, money later versus money first, motivation later, right? Um, and that's why so- the military is such a good training ground for uh, <laughs> <laughs> exactly for entrepreneurs. Exactly. <laughs> oh, that's so awesome. That's so awesome. You know, right when you're saying that, my father is a union worker in the Midwest right now. So there's a lot of buildings popping up in St. Louis area, Winfield areas, you know, a little bit west, southwest of St. Louis. And the same thing, he always complains. He's just like, I'm in the trenches out here, you know, building big buildings next to Bush Stadium and all this stuff. Cause I think they're coming up with like a, a, a professional soccer team or something in yep. St. Louis right now. So um, he's just like, man, I'm working for the dollar and the union and just stuff like that. And he's, you know, it just, I hear all those stories. So I love the workers first thing, man, because, you know, they do, they, my dad works his ass off, man. And he's just like, at the end of the, the week, he's exhausted. He's, where's my six pack of Bud Light? Anheuser Bush should be donating this shit. You know what I mean? <laughs> so I get it. I get it, man. So thanks for just going to workers first for just, um, and supplying this service, man, um, for family members like my mind, man, because that's, that's so key. Right. That's so key. Now, so, we, um, uh, a lady told us uh, she took a vacation on a Monday for the first time in 20 years. She was the payroll administrator <clears throat> and payroll was always run on Monday. And so it was the first time in 20 years she'd been able to take a vacation on a Monday because they rolled out Rumbix and she could check it remotely. And she's like, I didn't even have to change anything. I was, you know, I saw the time coming in throughout the week. I was able to relax, actually take a vacation with my family and, uh, <laughs> Yeah, that's, that's, you know, that's, that's what makes the long hours worthwhile, um, you know, seeing the impact you have. And I think, you know, that's something that every veteran, you know, is likely experienced, you know, whether they're drilling a water well in, in rural Africa, you know, to eliminate a, what used to be a five mile trip down to, um, you know, a lake to get water for their family to, you know, building a schoolhouse in Afghanistan. Um, and um, yeah, just having an impact on people's lives. Wow. Wow. Brother, I mean, it's it's super inspirational stuff, and I'm I'm loving how Rumbix has been able to grow the way it's been able to grow. Um, but before we say goodbye to you, we just want to hear one last golden grenade from you. Like, there's an ambitious vet out there right now that's been out for three years, is lacking satisfaction, fulfillment, or just a sense of purpose in life. Man, they figured out that career stability, but they're missing X. Dot dot dot. What would be one last wisdom bomb you would provide to that ambitious vet? And then uh, we'll say goodbye. Sounds good. Yeah, I think, um, you know, Maslow's hierarchy of needs is a pretty good uh, framework that stands up the test of time. You know, it's, it's certainly scary getting out of the military. You know, you got to start with physiologically, do I have food, water, shelter, paycheck? Uh, that kind of gets to the next level of like, you know, security and safety. Um, but then the next one above that is, is kind of belongingness and, and community. And, um, you know, uh, we as veterans have access to a community that only 1% of the United States has access to, um, you know, especially the, you know, more uh, post Vietnam war where uh, we all volunteered. Um, this is a, a club uh, that is, is nationwide and international. Um, I, I love hearing from vets all the time and um, never hesitate to, to connect with them on LinkedIn, help, help where I can. And, and so certainly, encourage anyone that wants to, to, uh, to reach out to me on LinkedIn, um, connect. Um, and, um, it's a pretty special community. It's, that's how I got, got to know Chris here. Um, got a cold email from a guy named Michael I'd never met and here we are on a podcast. And, um, so I think, you know, um, having access to that network, uh, and, and how special that network is can create that sense of community that a lot of Americans don't, don't have access to that are, struggling to find their tribe, find their identity. Uh, we've got ours um, as a result of our, our service. Um, and then, you know, leverage that network to, to get you to the next step. Um, if, if you're unhappy, uh, you, you've got access to a, a club that um, you had to volunteer to serve in um, with, with writing a check to Uncle Sam payable with up to your life. Um, and and uh, don't, don't hesitate to reach out to that network to, uh, to get your needs met and help you get to that next level. That's, that's amazing. 
wisdom bombs right there, Zach. So um, where can an ambitious vet go and find out more about Rumbix and yourself? And then uh, we'll sign off. Yeah, so uh, Rumbix is R-H-U-M-B-I-X. So rumbix.com is our website. Uh, check it out. And then um, you can drop me an email. I'm at Zach, Z-A-C-H, at rumbix.com or uh, look me up on LinkedIn. Um, I think there, there's not too many Zach Shields. And uh, so it should be too, shouldn't be too hard to find. Awesome. Zach, man, thanks for being ambitious fit. Thanks for spreading out the breadcrumbs for us up and coming youngins to go out and uh, kill it out of the uniform, brother. So thanks for joining us today. Of course. Thanks for inviting me. Happy to be here. The Ambitious Vet is available on all popular podcast platforms. Go to vettrainingcoaching.com to subscribe, rate, and share with fellow vets. If you're looking for payroll and HR services with high compliance at affordable pricing, Ambitious Vet, before you move on to the next thing in your day, make sure you go out and check out Get Payroll app. Payroll and HR service with high compliance, superior service with affordable pricing. We're talking about from onboarding a new employee to ensuring they're getting paid on time to implementing HR policy. Get Payroll helps you literally do it all. If you're ready to go learn more, Go ahead, go down in the show notes below, click our affiliate link, and I promise you, you will not be upset or butthurt as us military veterans would say it. And uh, go out and check it out. Figure out a way that you can get the policies ahead of time so you don't pay for it later. Click the link and check it out. And until next week, hold division and trust the process. Take care.